it is. Go, 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 go. The two McLarens leaving in tandem. Blakely and Boromand. They're both together. But Blakely, the pole sitter, he leads the way through the center S. Is in behind Donoso. Rasmussen going side by side with him. Ronha, who got dropped down to five, uh, got dropped down to P5, is now trying to fight back against the man who put him there. Freddie Rasmussen just ahead. Further back, Sebastian Job also getting in the mix with Patrick Sheepos as well. Marcel Kiefer moves up to 12th ahead of Alvaro Caraton. They're all moving in tandem. They're moving places, certainly in the bottom 10. Three wide as they make their way down towards the Ferragera. Here comes Eno again, who is trying to recover after a difficult race yesterday. Outside line for Caraton as he tries to hold the position. He keeps it. What a sensational effort. The sun starts to peek through the clouds and it is certainly heading towards dry tyre conditions. And I wonder if Freddie Rasmussen this time is going to head round the outside here. They're going to be side by side. Will Donoso defend? Absolutely not. Rasmussen up into the podium. Yeah, Rasmussen up in the top three. There is Blakely still holding on to fourth place as well. This effectively will be the lead of the race as he now ventures outwards now. Freddie Rasmussen also coming out in behind him as, as well as we're now seeing them make their way through. Now the key moment will be when Barry Burraman comes in and Alvaro Caraton, Luke Smith. Where will Burraman come out? Will it be ahead of Blakely or will it be behind? But the track looks dry enough, Matt. He's going to be uh, sliding around on this first outlap. As you can see, Ron has got the tyre temperature and he's going to go all the way around the outside of Donoso here. This is going to be a sketchy move, but Donoso decides, you know what, you can go ahead right now. Ron ha has that tyre temperature and these are crucial laps right now. They are. Ron ha now starting to put the uh, squeeze on these drivers further up as well. Ron ha knows that this is the moment. If you're going to push, it's going to be now right up to the final whistle uh, on lap 36. Ron ha is going to be pushing. In comes Burman now. The but this is the key moment in this race. Will Blakely retake his advantage? You'd expect him to do so, or will it be Buramand coming out and remaining in front? Would have that last lap been enough to maintain that lead advantage that he took after Blakely boxed? As there he makes his way out of the pit lane, he also has a set of the medium tyres on the car as well. They will be a lap younger, obviously, than that of Lucas Blakely as now he ventures his way out into pit road. He'll then take the escape. Danny Perezne, fastest lap, 1 minute 12, 7.91. As now they make their way through, there goes Blakely. He now takes, effectively, the net lead of the race with Luke Smith still in front on intermediate tyres. Blakely on top, no change in the top two. And the Alpine of Luke Smith is getting in the way slightly. Up the inside goes Barry Burman. Freddy Rasmussen should get him on traction as well. But we're seeing another carbon copy here. Luke Smith is trying to bring Patrick Sheepos into this somehow by just staying out there on intermediates. He's coming back at the McLaren shadow car. Three wide as Luke Smith manages to take the position back. But Freddy Rasmussen crucially gets through on Barry Burman. Barry Burman is going to be fuming. This is not what this is certainly not was what, what was in his story, but Tom Thomas Ronha also getting mixed up in this fray with Luke Smith as well. They remain side by side down through the next straight. Turn four, and next we've seen many a move into this particular bend, but the switchback being played by Thomas Ronha. And they now look to send it down through towards the next right and twist to the wheel as Thomas Ronha looks to try and regain the grip. They head through the next right now, late on the brakes. He's going to try and find it in towards fourth place. He gets him. He's ahead of Luke Smith. Ronha can't believe what's going on here we can see on the steering wheel he's trying to show us how aggravated he is right now he can't believe he's experiencing it again as Donoso goes round the outside Donoso now looking to try and launch a challenge here on Thomas Ronha into the center S's Donoso gets out of Ronha and a tap in the rear by Nicholas Longe on Thomas Ronha as well. They're getting so close together. This could be decisive in the title. Uh, certainly the title race is squeeze here as well from Ronha as they head down through towards turn four. He's saying no, absolutely not. Longe looks down the inside, still can't unlock the door. Ronha really slow in those last couple of corners. Uh, which allowed Donoso to get through, and then Longe tried to go through as well. I wonder if the stewards will have a look at how late Ronha closed the door there on the Alfa Romeo driver. But look how quick Longe is looking at the moment. He is making his way through here and uh, trying to get up to at least P4. But Ronha's championship chances are just going down the drain at the moment. Oh, Longe! And there goes Longe, down through the inside of the center S's, and the Alfa Romeo now 
Romero gets the nose in front. What about Perezne? The teammates as well. Alfa Romero looking for a double overtake in the first sector as they head down through towards turn four. Ron R looks to the outside, still can't find a way through, and it looks very much like the Haas's day is done. He sat in six and shows no signs of recovery. We're now going to see a replay and live pictures on the right. Don't worry. Uh, this is the move from Longay, by the way. What a move there. And Longay does make it through on Donoso on the right-hand side of your screens. Donoso deciding to not defend that one. Yeah, absolutely right indeed. Longay just positioned the car perfectly, heading through towards turn one and two. It was a wonderful move as we're now watching Ron Har again. Getting closer to the back of Donoso. Longay, uh, to that effect, is now in fourth place himself. And we have team radio from Thomas Ron Har as well. Yeah, the notes are driving really dangerously. Interesting. And at the end of the day, patience is the best game to play, and certainly Rasmussen has done that before, but not this time. He's going to make the move on Barry Burraman on lap 33, and certainly the Great Dane, certainly Freddy Rasmussen, has pulled the plug on any sort of Barry Burraman charge in second. Rasmussen up into P2. Barry let him through there. He absolutely let him through. Yeah, DRS is a bit of an advantage, but Freddy was not unleashing any battery whatsoever there. Barry wants to follow for the last few laps to be the one that goes on the attack on the last lap. It's all mind games. Speaking of overtakes, in comes Donoso on Nicholas Longe. Is he going to get it? No, Longe holds on to it, at least for now. They come out of the centre S's, this being for P4, as now they head down through towards turn four. It will be Donoso, the Chilean. He's going to hang it around the outside for the Scuderia Ferrari. The Alfa Romeo, though, far too quick, far too clever. Longe says no. Oh, they're still having a look around the outside here, though. Donoso's not going to have anywhere to go, and I'm so surprised that Ronhar's not in this fight. If anything, he'd lost a bit of time. But as we look back towards, probably, the front of the field, because we've still got a fight between Freddy Rasmussen and Barry Burrum, but it looks as though Freddy has got enough in the tank to hold on in that Red Bull. Yeah, Lucas Blakely, though, he will take the final corners here, coming out of Junshao, now past the Archibankardis. He took victory at Bahrain. He took victory in Italy. He also scored in the Netherlands, but the for the fourth time this season, he'll take a victory, this time at Brazil. Lucas Blakely wins the F1 Esports Brazilian Grand Prix, and it'll go all the way to Yas Marina at Abu Dhabi. What a sensational drive from Lucas Blakely. No one had a chance when he managed to extend that gap. It was a fantastic drive from Lucas Blakely. He's all but sealed the title. He's got a bit of work to do tomorrow. But my goodness me, that was a champion's drive.